and you are live. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is a wonderful day. I want to say welcome to Healing Through the Arts. Today's event is, our, is part of our Community Healing Day series. Um, Community Healing Days is a chance for our City Colleges of Chicago family to come together so that we can reflect on what we've been through. We can remember what, we, what and who we have lost and support each other as we build on our resilience. Today, we do that through the arts. And so our students and some staff have submitted fantastic works of art, and you will get a chance to see that today. Thank you so much for joining us. Really, really, really appreciate you being here. I want to introduce our panel who, are, who will be leading us today. Uh, first, we have Daniel Schulman. Uh, Daniel is the Program Director of Visual Art for the Chicago Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. He has directed the exhibition program at the Chicago Cultural Center since 2012. A curator, art historian, and writer, uh, Schulman has contributed to or organized numerous exhibitions of modern and contemporary art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Museum of Modern Art in New York the Art Institute of Chicago, and the Spurtis Museum. He specializes in African-American art since 1984, 1994. Thank you so much, Daniel, for being with us today. Thank you. And we have Rhonda Brown. Rhonda is the president of City Colleges of Chicago Foundation and our vice chancellor for advancement. In addition to having a successful career in advancement, Rhonda also is a widely collected visual artist. Her paintings are exhibited on Martha's Vineyard and have been featured in shows in and around Chicago and Cleveland. Her parents, a uh, uh, fun fact, great fact, her parents, Ernestine and Malcolm Brown, founded and opened the very first African-American owned for-profit gallery in the country. That was in 1980. Um, the gallery has since closed, but their legacy as art collectors and dealers continues through their daughter. Thank you, Rhonda. Welcome for being here. Thank you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, thank you all again, just to kind of give you a little bit of how we are going to go about today. We're going to have our participants. Um, we're going to show you their artwork and start off there. Um, we'll have uh, Daniel is going to give us some comments and then you'll get a chance to meet the artist as we go through today's program. And so I'll turn it over to Daniel uh, to give us some, you know, just kind of center us in the discussion. And uh, shortly after that, we'll get to see all the great work from our students and staff. Thanks, Danelle, very much. I'm um, uh, grateful for the opportunity to be here with you today. This is a wonderful program. Um, and, um, you know, I think we all do share this experience, um, although we share it in different ways. Uh, it's been a very challenging year. And it's been hard for artists and arts venues. Um, it's been very difficult to, you know, rob artists of their audiences. Um, and to try to find alternative ways of, um, for artists and audiences to encounter one another has been our mission, uh, in addition to supporting artists uh, by raising funds and uh, grants for artists and organizations uh, that the, both the state of Illinois and the city is involved with. Um, and also doing a lot of public art in and around Chicago. Um, so we've been investing as um, vigorously as possible in the arts community. And um, I'm just glad to be here with you today uh, to talk about uh, the work that we'll be seeing.
I'm sorry. It looks like I was getting a message. Was are things playing okay? We could. I saw the okay? art, but I I saw the art, but I didn't hear anything. Ah, uh, okay. All right, no problem. We're like I said, we're in a Zoom world and we're making it work the way the best we can. So I'm going to start it over because I want to make sure that our artists get featured the way that they should be featured. And should be going now. How's that?
some really, really fantastic works, really fantastic works. Um, I want to thank our artist again for um, submitting. It was uh, a joy to see. Um, we're going to spend some time talking with some of our artists that submitted today. And so I'll just kind of start. Um, uh, Dawid, um, uh, Dawid, would you come online and let us see you and give us a chance to kind of chat with you about, uh, about your work? Hello. Um, so I, hey. I, I should start. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, so um, the the first, I, I was uh, a little bit surprised that my my painting was going to be one of the first ones on the PowerPoint presentation to be seen. So I was like already getting kind of anxious about wow, I have to, you know, talk about it very quick, like very soon. So. Um, I was working on this painting, um, which is um, my interpretation and or spin on Picasso's Guernica. Mm. And I was really inspired by, you know, the painting itself and how it was conveying, you know, how, how he was seeing like the Spanish war. And um, so, you know, like Black Lives Matter has been a movement that has been getting a lot of traction very quickly. And, you know, it, it's, you, you know, there's a difference between it being um, becoming much more um, apparent in the media. And there's a between that and also like, you know, it always being around, you know, like, Black Lives Matter has always been around, even if it wasn't just some hashtag on Twitter that was getting started for awareness. You know, the struggle has always been around. And when I was making this painting, um, it for initially started out as a drawing. And um, it, it was a drawing for my art class that I was working on it. Um, and I wanted to take it even further and create a large scale um, painting of, of this um, artwork. So some of the context behind it, um, you know, if, if, um, if we were still looking at uh, the painting uh, on the presentation for screen sharing, um, which I'm not seeing it right now, um, um, so basically, I, I have the painting also right next to me, hanging up on my wall. Uh, I felt like that's also the best place to put it. Um, there's a lot of symbols, um, you, you know, that is a symbols of things that have been occurring these past few months, ever since the pandemic started, um, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, and also taking a deeper dive into history with, uh, you, you know, um, Native American rights, and also incorporating, you know, a lot of struggles that have been occurring in U U.S. history, and you know, it, it seems it, it can seem out of place that I, as a white person, am, you know, painting, you know, artwork of this type of topic, but I, I feel like the pain is is just very universal. You know, you, you see a lot of people come, going out there, speaking about it, speaking against racial injustice. And I also feel like, especially with the inclusion of, um, you know, the building in the painting and also alluding to old paintings, old works such as Manifest Destiny. Um, you know, I, I know that there's, much more history that takes place, which is the source of why we are here today, but also acknowledging the privileges that we have today as people, that we are able to address these types of like systemic issues and bring it into the in, into light and and work towards um, the goal of, you know, and which is you know Black Lives Matter and um, racial justice and. Uh, make, make that is 
yeah, and making sure that everybody is treated equally and, you know. That is really excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Rhonda, Daniel, did you have any uh, other comments? Want to make sure that we uh, get a chance to see all of our um, all of our gifted artists. Yeah, you know, I would just love to say, Dawid, that, that, that it's a beautiful painting. And what I was struck by was the way in which the narrative, like there's these little narratives kind of throughout the piece and how you've kind of twisted, the, the images are like kind of, um, turned around. It's it's so interesting. So can you talk just a little bit about what's happening over there in that left, oh, the left quadrant of the painting? It looks like there's a woman maybe on a table and, and you know, someone over her. It's just, it was really, it's really interesting how much is going on in the piece. Yeah. So when comparing that to the original piece by, of Guernica, um, you know, it's very reminiscent with uh, positioning and where where the pain is presented on, you know, uh, on the particular areas of the painting. So when when in around March and May, when things were really blowing very like like they were just getting very like serious, like Black Lives Matter protests, and like like it's it's hard to talk about because like you know, just seeing all this violence that is going on, it's like, like, it's amazing that nobody's, like, the government is just not doing anything about it, and they're taking, you know, they're taking action towards the people instead of what the people want, are trying to talk about, and one of the, one of the most scariest things I've seen on on the internet and I feel like it is a blessing to have the internet because we are able to expose the brutality in a much more wider scale. Um, I was watching a video of it, 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 this can be kind of triggering for some people. So just putting that out there. Well, Dawi, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I hate to cut you off, but we want to make sure uh, we can come back to uh, some of yeah. the other broader topics and we'll have a, a, some opportunity to build that in there as well. But if, if it would be okay, we want to make sure we kind of get up, give our artists. Um, yeah, uh, good Perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll just write it down, but yeah. yeah we'll bring you back in later um, as well. Thank you so much. Um, we have Irina Avarina next. Um, Irina, if you'd come on, come on and talk with us a bit about your work. Hello. Um, hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here with you today. And I wanted to say thank you uh, that you gave me this opportunity to participate today and to share my art. And it was very unexpectedly for me, but I really happy. And um, yeah, this is my artwork. Here it is too. This is original. And we made um, um, in two drawing, this two, two design class um, assignment with uh, two point pers perspectives. So I decided to make it not just a structure with empty walls and nothing inside and but instead of that I created like a house of my dream and it's uh, as you can see it is inside the woods and the warm light is blowing from from inside <clears throat> and I think that now it's very important for everyone to have a such a warm house a home where everybody can come and be happy especially now during pandemic time. Um, that's why I was inspired by that idea. Thank you. Daniel. I, can I ask you a question? Yeah, is that your own home or is that um, an idealized? It's idealized, place. it's not my own, yeah. But I hope maybe somewhere, <laughs> sometimes I will have it. <laughs> it's beautiful, it was kind of, um, uh sad to see the chairs empty around the fire pit but uh, <laughs> here, here is the shoes and it signs that everybody is inside <laughs> i see i see 
It's, yeah. it's beautiful. What, what's the medium arena, arena? Is it watercolor? Yeah, it is watercolor and ink. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We're gonna bring up uh, Daniel Gordon now. Thank you, Irina. Thank you. Um, sure, hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I just wanna say thank you, Dr. Barnett, for uh, arranging this. I know that it, you make it seem so easy, but I know that this is a lot of work on your part. And I really appreciate your efforts and also um, the distinguished panel that you were able to, to uh, assemble. So thank you. Um, before I say anything else, I just want to give a shout out to my art history prof professor, Erica McCormick, who encouraged all her students who are artists to submit. And I was hesitant because I really rather critical of my own work, but um, I decided to give it a try. So here I am. And um, gosh, so this is what I entitled COVID bingo. And the reason I chose it is because I had found this drawer unit. It was actually originally a drawer. Um, and it is like a bingo card because it's a five by five. So to make a long story short, um, these are all individual pieces of slip cast uh, porcelain that I created in a um, class on slip casting taught by Heather Coffey, Professor Heather Coffey of Harold Washington College. And it just sort of almost assembled itself. Um, there, as I said, the, the real point is that it feels like we are living in a very uh, stochastic point where we don't know whether we're going to be victims of the pandemic or not. And <clears throat> um, that, that skull motif that I have was from a shot glass that of crystal skull vodka that I, I used, uh, I made a cast of it. And so um, the real point is saying that this, the space in the dead center with, um, I don't know if you can see it, it's holding a heart. You can see it in, my, in the background there. That's, that's a piece that I created. Um, that's just before the final firing. Um, it's holding out a heart. So that is the free space. And I would say that that's the real message is that love and compassion are, are free. And if, if nothing else, um, this pandemic has been a test of our ability to be humans to each other and to, to, to reach out to love and compassion with others, other people. So that's, that's the really the long and short of it. So thank you. And yeah. Thanks, yeah. Rhonda, Daniel. Yeah, I, I'm so curious. You know, it looks like a little curio, you know, kind of piece. And I'm I, so are they kind of really miniature? Uh, you know, yeah, it says they're, they're about, oh, gosh, no, no, no higher than two and a half inches high. Oh, wow. So and um, I basically lived in the studio to make all these things. And this is before the, you know, this the pandemic hit just in the middle of the semester. And so I wasn't even able to finish any of the things I could. So for me, this was an opportunity to, and we'd never got to have a show. Um, we were supposed to, to have a show in the Hare Washington College um, gallery. And we just, because of the pandemic, we never got around to it. So um, for me, this is, this show was really important because it gave me closure to that that class in which I poured out um, so much time and energy and um, yeah, you know, I made about a couple dozen different molds, um, mm -hmm. of found objects, you know, the arms are from a baby doll and there are knobs and other things. And it's all, that's part of my, um, my working, Joseph Cornell is a huge inspiration for me. Um, and that sort of got me thinking about Shadowbox, and he's actually sort of a banner artist for the times we're living in. I mean, he never he never left Flushing, really. He never left uh, New York City. Um, he lived in a really pretty rundown house with his his mother and his um, disabled brother. And I find it really relevant for me 
and I'm creating a lot of Joseph Cornell stuff because, um, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, I'm, you know, I'm taking care of my mother now, um, who's older and who can't get out and needs, needs, um, someone around. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I would have to say that the last thing I want to say in connection with healing through the arts is that, um, I have found just having a pad of paper and some colored pencils nearby um, help me just deal with anxiety. Whenever I feel like things are overwhelming, I just sit there and I doodle. And I've really made some really nice things and I, I'm really hoping to get back to school. I'm not sure when I'm gonna be able to, but yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. That is beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. We're going to um, hear from Nissa Doss now. Hello. Um, thank you for having me. Hey. <laughs> um, so for one, so one, the the piece that I'm going to be talking about would be the one called "I'm Scared." I specifically drew this during quarantine, uh, during when the riots started. So I was just feeling really scared at the time, as, as you can see all the things I'm scared for. And I didn't really know uh, how to express my fear. So I just like, here's my iPad. Let me just draw it and just go with the flow. So it was an unplanned artwork based on my fears. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So when I saw this piece first, um, you know, I was first very curious what the medium was. So and, and it, it, it did strike me as um, digital. So um, I, I, I really like how you um, integrated this like almost like line work like you've you use this technology to create your painting mm -hmm. and then you kind of went back into it with like your handwriting on a piece of paper you know which yeah. you know I, I I find that to be really interesting I also like am drawn into that back that black corner where you know you, you use words you, you know the there's like this juxtaposition of living and dying you know calling for help and then being like kind of balled up you know it, yeah. it, it really communicates you know, the emotion that you were feeling. Um, beautiful, it's a really beautiful piece. Thank you. And you submitted yeah. several works, right? Yes, I submitted two more. Yeah. Can we see I those can, other works, Janelle? That would be great, thanks. Yeah, the, all three of them are digital, so. So uh, here's the first one. Uh, this one was because I was listening to music called um, Leaving Earth. And I, I called it a future with a question mark because it's possible because it looks like it's polluted and everyone's like dying and air pollution and all that. So I just really wanted to just draw a picture based on a song I was listening to. That's great. And then this one, it was actually an artwork for class to where she said, be creative, where you can draw a picture or uh, make an essay. And I thought, why not draw, uh, why not just draw it? So this is Misty Coupland. And um, I really want to draw her as like a center of attention where she blends in, where she represents all three Oh, sorry, all four of uh, the dances she did, which is Romeo and Juliet, uh, Firebird, Rodeo, and um, the Swan. Yeah, I really am enjoying the comment you make. Like, there's a lot of kind of statements that you're making through your work, right? Um, <laughs> you know, there's that, that her, her skin tone and her leotard tone you know, yeah. that, I think that's an interesting comment you know that's connected to her her um toe shoes um yeah 
I know we don't have a lot of time, but you know, it, like I really find all of that, um, you know, when someone is able to make commentary through their work and do it successfully, I just, I find that, you know, really compelling. Yeah, the funny thing about it is it doesn't always start out like that. So like, I just draw it on pencil a little bit and then <laughs> I do it based on the color and how we go. And I'm like, oh, this is better that this way. So I wing it the first, the first shot and then later on, I know what I'm doing. It's all planned out. Thank you, Nissa. Um, we're gonna have uh, Michaela Petkus next. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll share your work here. Okay. Okay, so um, this one specifically, like art has always been primarily healing for me. And one of the main themes, I guess, of my healing process has just been um, like addressing my inner child and the things that she did not get, I guess, um, and just like nurturing that child. And I thought it was important to just portray that, like we all kind of have the same needs and desires. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to, like they were talking about previously, there's been a lot of, um, we've been seeing a lot of like very graphic things of um, like what's going on with police brutality. So I just wanted to, um, put out like as much positive imagery of the black community that I could as like a small way to contribute to um, kind of balancing that out. Here are some other pieces by uh, Michaela as well. Yeah. This one is really about, um, I attended college from 2015 to 2017 as a psychology major. Um, and then I kind of took a break and wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And then this semester I decided to kind of like take the leap of faith to go back as a fine art major. Um, and it was just a moment where I felt like I was finally aligned with like what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I was trying to convey that in that piece. And now I'll just show the other ones as well. Seems like I wish we had much more time. <laughs> we could kind of get into a lot of discussion about all of these, but they're really fantastic. Um, I think what I'll do now is I'll bring, because um, I'm trying to be mindful of the time, I'll bring everyone back into, so if everyone can turn on their camera and you can kind of see um, our, our troop, if you will. Oh, I forgot. We also uh, also have one professor in our company as well. So I'll bring uh, Dr. Roberts, Dr. Roberts's piece on the screen as well, and we can kind of take a gander. Thanks, Dr. Barnett. The piece that you're looking at is actually, it's from a series of diver paintings that I did a few years ago. And the, the symbolism for me of the diver kind of falling through space was somewhat kind of like a metaphor for life in a way. So the, the diver, employs all of this muscle and skill and kind of physical control through the process of what might be a very complex dive. But in the end, the, the dive is, is ultimately controlled by gravity, right? So that to me is kind of an interesting metaphor for the struggle between destiny and the control that we all would like to have in our lives. So I guess you could call it destiny, you could call it fate, you could call it God's will, whatever, whatever you know you choose. 
But for me, kind of the, the, the visual idea of that was compelling enough for me to, to do a whole series of, of diving paintings like this. Um, I did take them out of the kind of sporting context and obviously changed the background, added the flowers. I think for me, I wanted to, to kind of isolate the figure against something that kind of made, made you see the figure in a slightly different kind of a way. And, you know, obviously it's, it's not so much about the sport for me in terms of the interest that I have in the diver but you know, much, much more about this kind of you know, symbolic notion um, of, what, of what the diver kind of was, was symbolizing for me. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I'll, I'll ask um, uh, everyone who's attending today, no matter if you're in your living room or kitchen or where you, wherever you are, give our artists a, a round of applause. Can you can you hear it? Can you hear it? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And there are lots of uh, lots of chat, lots of things going on in the chats. Just very, you know, lots of congratulations and and beautiful work and beautiful art. Uh, let's see all of our artists, uh, if you would come on screen, and so we can kind of chat a little bit about. Um, art and sort of art in this era and what art has meant this year in particular. Well, you know, I think that because people are faced with this existential crisis, you know, they're not as busy um, or externally focused that it's a really great time for ordinary people to to do art that's therapeutic um, and to sort of reclaim the, the art making for the normal person and not just sort of an elite activity, you know, as a mode of expression. I wonder what people thought about that. Yeah, even for uh, the, the folk artist, if you will, um, whether it's a doodle or something that's a little more formal, uh, giving a voice to something that um, you may not necessarily have the words to express. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I think that's super important is that I often find myself understanding what I'm feeling by what I'm drawing, just by allowing myself to express myself through lines. And saying, oh, I didn't realize I felt that way about this or that. And, you know, but it's clear as day when you look at the um, what your hands have, have made, when you allow your um, allow your right brain to take over a little bit. And so, yeah, I mean, I got to say, I'm really, really impressed by the colors and the design that the, the students have brought. So, I mean, wow. I mean, I, I just... Harold Washington, uh, the city colleges give such a great education for the money and it's just so diverse too. That's what I love about it. You know, coming to ceramics class and there's a woman with a hijab on who's doing art and there are people from all walks of life and, and um, backgrounds together. And it's, it's just, it's really, it's, it's so beautiful. So that's all. Daniel, you've been uh, working with artists uh, cr across the city. Um, sort of this idea of uh, incorporating art as an expression of healing, of hope, of moving through this year. Uh, what are you seeing sort of across the, the broader landscape? Um, thanks, Donnell. That's a good question. Um, I'm also really interested in what, what Daniel just said about um, you know, the opportunity to confront um, yourself and to ask yourself questions. Um, uh, I've got a lot on my mind, I guess, from these, from all of these wonderful artworks. Um, you know, it can be an extremely stressful time too, but I see in the artworks um, a kind of attempt to make connections with other people and to communicate, even though the purpose may be um, self-care and self-healing. Um, 
I see also in a lot of the work, um, uh, artists thinking about their families and children, um, thinking about the future also. So I think this um, kind of uh, attempt to get away into the studio and to work on yourself um, can go into so many directions and it's so healthy. Uh, it's a kind of um, mode of survival and care. So um, uh, I think this exhibition online kind of demonstrates uh, the power of making art and how healthy it can be for us. Uh, and also some of it looked like artists were actually making art with children. And that, I mean, we do that with our grandchildren um, who we're able to visit and spend time with. But um, uh, I think exploring other um, personas and other people and other ages and other times, those all come out in these works in wonderful ways. I also thought something that um, I wanted to mention, um, is it David who did the piece that was inspired by Guernica. That's so um, courageous to take on such an iconic um, universal masterpiece and have that inspire you. Uh, but I couldn't at all tell it was inspired by Guernica. So I thought he internalized it, took what he needed from it and um, completely made it his own. And that was so impressive. Uh, so everybody, I'm so impressed with the artworks. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't get a chance to bring in um, uh, Mr. Adrian Dennis earlier, and, and I just showed his piece, and I'll, I'll bring it back up again uh, just as a reminder. Um, uh, Adrian, if, if you wouldn't mind, tell us a little bit about um, this, your, your art here. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Adrian Dennis. Uh, this is a piece that I was working on this semester in my figure drawing class. Uh, also similar to Daniel, thank you, Erica, for um, telling me about this opportunity. I was glad I got chosen. Um, uh, but just a quick thing about my work. Um, it was created on this uh, quote that I heard. I actually cannot remember who it's by, uh, but it's called, uh, but it goes, um, and now that I don't have to be perfect, I can be good, uh, was kind of what um, drove this piece. Um, uh, there's a lot of pressure uh, with, you know, being perfect um, and things like that. I grew up in that type of uh, home where I had a lot of pressure to be perfect, um, not to get into it, but I wanted to uh, make something that wasn't perfect at all. Um, and uh, so I've kind of um, just formed these portraits, uh, but wanted to, you know, make it into a perfect square uh, to kind of play with the idea of perfection but not perfect at all. Um, the healing aspect was the process of creating it. Um, there's about 99 portraits in there. Uh, there's really tiny ones. The scales, they're all, all over the place. Um, but I drew this, or I uh, created this in my figure drawing class with Jelena Berink uh, this semester. Um, she was awesome and just kind of really uh, gave me the, you know, the push that I needed to, to uh, create something like this. Uh, and yeah. So there it is. Thank you. Rhonda, what, tell us, how are you digesting all that we have today? So I'll, I'll say a couple of things, Donnell. Um, first, I am completely blown away by the, the level of work that we've seen today. Um, you know, I've been to Truman, um, and Wright um, and Harold Washington and had an opportunity to see, um, you know, the artwork that's in the halls. And, you know, I, I kind of even walked in some of the studios and, you know, seeing your work is just um, testament to the, the um, you know, connectivity and, and strong faculty that we have um, at City Colleges in the, the various art programs. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that, you know, doing this, you know, talking about your work and showing it is, it's a very vulnerable uh, space that, that, you know, and it's, it can be scary. And, you know, you all did such a beautiful job, both communicating, um, you know, how 
um, the work moved you as well as how it healed you. Um, again, it's very clear that um, the instruction, the critiques that you're having in your programs and your courses has been uh, really instructive and helpful to creating um, the, the work that you're doing, the narratives that you're able to construct and share. That's such an important part of um, this work as artists. So um, I'm, I'm truly impressed. And then I would say finally, you know, as you know, you know, when the pandemic hit and then, you know, we um, heard about George Floyd and all of the other uh, beautiful souls that have lost their lives way too soon. You know, the first thing that we see and we notice is art, right? And, you know, all over um, the internet, the Instagram, social media, people are sharing art. People are creating art and defining and finding their purpose. And so, you know, I just want to encourage all of you to kind of, you know, double down in in that, in this moment, as we're about to kind of get into the winter, you know, and kind of dig in deep into the work that you're creating and, and don't stop and keep sharing and keep, um, keep helping us all heal, right? Uh, because, you know, someone said healing through the arts is, is that kind of body, you know, your, your mind and your body connecting, right? And when you are able to put something out on paper, um, it, it, is, it is an outgrowth of you. And then the people that are receiving it also get something. Um, so I just wanna encourage everybody to keep doing it. So thank you for having me here and allowing me to witness and experience the work. And um, I'm truly impressed, Dr. Roberts. Um, and I look forward to seeing more of City College's Chicago students work. It's great, excellent. Thank you. I'm going to turn to uh, uh, Professor Roberts, um, but before I'll do, I'll mention to all of our attendees, if you have any questions for any of our guests, artists, or panelists, um, put them in the chat. I see that there's a lot of conversation going on in the, in the chat, uh, and so that that is wonderful, um, but we do want to give the audience some time to um, talk with us as well. Uh, Professor, while they're doing that, Professor Roberts, tell us what it's like sort of guiding students through um, uh, not just this art process, but art process over Zoom and in the midst of a pandemic, right? Like all the things that's happening. Help us, you know, tell us some, some more about that. Well, yeah, that's a, you know, it's a, that's a big question. The, I, I would say, we're able to communicate and connect pretty well over Zoom for critiques. The communication aspect is has has worked okay with that with my art classes, but I do feel like the one thing that is missing a little bit is we have a kind of flatness that happens with all artwork on the screen that you know and the the complete kind of reduction of scale issues. So, you know, whether it's a painting that a student has done that's four feet by six feet is gonna be presented in the same way, the same size as a paint, you know, as a little drawing that's done by, you know, three inches by three inches. So that's a little bit, you know, lacking in terms of experiencing the art because I feel like just the intimacy that we have in terms of you know, what, what happens with us when our face is just a few minutes away from a painting, a, a lot of that is lost in translation, right, in the, in the Zoom platform. But student, my students have been, you know, as you've talked about already, very resilient in this whole process. They've shown up, you know, they show their work, they photograph it the best that they can. And you know, even under different lighting conditions and different angles, et cetera, just to kind of communicate this, this is what I made, this is what I did. And then sometimes we'll, we'll also hold it up like you know, my student Arena did earlier. So I think you know, it it can the kind of crux of an art course can can happen virtually, but there is that, there's a little bit of that experiential 
information that is, you know, it, it just, it does get lost, right? If, if we're not physically together and if we're not physically seeing the work, but you know, I I'm, have been constantly impressed with the things that students have overcome during the course of this year and, you know, things that they have dealt with, I, you know, would, would reduce me to pieces, but they have kept with it. They passed classes, you know, so I, I can't say enough about our City College students. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I, I want to give our students, you know, kind of, you know, if, if any of our students want to give us some wrap up comments, um, you know, kind of close us out, let's close us out a little bit. I, I understand today is the last day of the semester. And so, you know, people are, you know, kind of have that hurrah going on a little bit. How are, just give us some closing comments, if you would, any, any of our uh, Nissa, Michaela, Yeah, um, similar to what Daniel was saying earlier, um, I think as well as art being such a healing thing for the individual, it's been a way to just connect with other people when connection feels like kind of impossible right now. Um, so yeah, I would just say it's definitely been a saving grace during this this time. Yeah, uh, it helped me because I have a cousin who who paints. So sometimes she would call me or send me pictures like, is this good or like, do you want this? She also asks for recommendations sometimes. So it kind of helped me in helping her a lot too. You know, um, this has really helped me deal with a different scale because I'm really interested in larger scale works, but I was, um, I had to do smaller stuff. And so that's really sort of fun. Adrian, you have uh, anything you'd like to share with us? Um, yeah, I would just, you know, first like to thank you guys again for the opportunity. Uh, this is actually my first time doing something like this. Um, so it was definitely a cool moment to talk about my work um, and hear, you know, comments. And uh, it, was all, it was a healing way for me to, to create and again to talk about it today. Um, so thank you guys for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, we also have Irina and David who are who are still on, um, and so if you want to pop in, feel free to do so. Uh, but I, I just wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you all so much. I can tell from a lot of the comments and the chat and some of the emails that I've received leading up to this, um, this has been really, really impactful for a lot of folks. Um, they get to get an opportunity to kind of see what they're feeling expressed in a way that is creative and and communicated differently um, helps people to have voice um, in this time that you know a lot of us feel drowned out by all the things that's going on but your artwork has really kind of cut through a lot of the noise and so that has been really really powerful um, that is about all the time that we have. Uh, please feel free. This, as I mentioned earlier, um, the video will be, this entire Zoom video will be uploaded to the City College's YouTube page, where you'll have an opportunity to go back and look through all of the works, all of the submissions for, for the day and kind of pause and really kind of take it in and digest it. Um, thank you all so much, especially uh, this four part series of community healing days, um, just as an opportunity to kind of have these conversations, fireside chats, town hall kinds of thing, um, to kind of see where people are and how they're using various forms to push through. Uh, as we go into the holidays, uh, you know, please reach out to uh, a family, a friend, a Zoom, a call, something that is distance, um, but make sure that you're connected. We may be uh, physically uh, distanced, but that doesn't mean we have to be socially distanced. So reach out to someone over this time, be a friend uh, to someone, and we will see each other again starting next semester, ready to get back at it and do some more fantastic things for the next year. 
with that, that's all the time that we have. Thank you all so much. Uh, Rhonda, Daniel, thank you for your expertise and Professor Roberts for coming in and all of our wonderful audience, all of our wonderful artists. Thank you all so much. You all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much.